Hi, I'm Alistair, I'm a games designer, and in this video I want to show you a little bit about uh, this puzzle I've just made, which is called uh, Starry Starry Night. And how it works is I've got a piece of uh, MDF board here, which I've just spray painted black, and then I've inserted into it a lot of small LEDs, um, some of which you will notice are sparkling. So these are um, controlled by uh, NeoPixels um, running from an Arduino behind the scenes. And you'll see uh, that uh, this star here, uh, this one, uh, this one, and this one will uh, be sort of flashing or sparkling uh, somewhat irregularly, a little bit to resemble stars uh, glistening and flickering in the night sky. And the idea is that what players have to discover at some other point during the puzzle is um, a map of the stars that looks like this. And they uh, correlate the map to the stars that are glistening here and read out the names of the stars. Now the star names have been chosen so that uh, when said out loud uh, they sound like numbers. So for example we've got um, uh, 4, 8, 60, NT9 uh, which combined with another uh, star that says Sev you get Sev NT9, uh, things like that. So uh, ultimately the four stars here will lead to a numeric code uh, which when read out loud gives the solution to a lock uh, or something like that which they can open up when they solve the puzzle. Um, so it's uh, pretty straightforward to make to be honest. Uh, it just continues glistening like this. This is the electronics. If I show you the back of the board, uh, so it's a single piece of MDF. Most of the stars uh, are fixed and are the simple um, LEDs here which were sold as kind of like a, a low voltage LED strip so they're all connected on a single circuit and then you see uh, here, here, here and here these are individual uh, NeoPixel LEDs um, which have got a 5 volt power ground and a data line going to them, that's a yellow one coming to this Arduino in the corner and that's just running a fairly simple code that uh, causes them to flash uh, with a sort of a random pattern. So I'll just show you the Arduino code. Um, it's nice and straightforward. There's only about 60 lines to it. Um, I'm using something called the Fast LED Library to control the NeoPixel strips, and you can download that from fastled.io. And then I've got a couple of uh, just definitions to do with the LEDs themselves. So I'm only controlling four LEDs and they've been wired in series so they all share the same uh, 5 volt and ground supply and then there's a data line that goes from uh, pin 4 of the Arduino into the first LED and then it goes from the data out of that to the data in of the next one and then the data out of that one to the data into the next one and so on and so on in series. Uh, I'm setting a master brightness uh, of the LEDs to 96 and I'm just limiting the frame rate a little bit um, just so that uh, you know the frames are not being pushed as fast as the Arduino is running. Uh, we'll limit that a little bit just to, to slow the whole thing down to 120 frames a second. And then creating a global variable um, which is going to uh, be made of um, an array of the CRGB uh, objects um, and that just represents effectively the colour that each LED is going to um, take on in the strip um, and so this is going to be an array that's four long because I've got four LEDs and then the setup function um, just wait a little bit when the code first starts up I found um, this is recommended as kind of best practice when you're using um, uh, near pixel strips is just to make sure that they've um, had sufficient time to kind of initialize before you start addressing them in the code at all. So just waiting three seconds when the code first loads up uh, to make sure everything's had time to settle down a bit. And then uh, this function here uh, is where you kind of um, configure the fast LED library to tell it about the strips you're using. So um, the type of LEDs I'm using are something called WS. 2812, more commonly referred to as um, NeoPixels, um, although that's kind of a brand name of Ardafruit, I think, but you can get um, identical functioning ones uh, sort of without the brand, and this is the generic name for them. 
Um, the library can control other sorts of uh, LED strips as well, so ones that have kind of a clock pin and a data pin, or sort of older styles. But I think these are these are great sort, and this is what I've used in some of my previous puzzles as well. There's four of them, and the uh, byte order for the colours is green, red, blue, uh, for these particular LEDs. Uh, this is the array object, which I initialized up here. And uh, again, there's there's four of them. Oh, sorry. So this is the data pin. The four here is the data pin I'm using on the Arduino, and then number of LEDs is four here. Uh, and then I just set the overall brightness to the brightness, uh, which I defined up here, and that's the setup. And then I've just got one. Um, so to make it a bit more interesting, I could make each of the sparkling stars just kind of twinkle red or twinkle white or something like that. But I thought it'd be more interesting just to have a bit of a bit of variety so I've got a um, just an int value here which represents uh, a hue so um, the way that the fast LED library represents colors you can either do it as uh, an RGB value or you can do it as an HSV value so that's uh, uh, when you give the hue and the saturation and the brightness of the color elements rather than the red green and blue as separate pixels so um, what I'm going to do is keep a value here, which I'm just going to slowly um, cycle through uh, red and yellow and green parts of the spectrum just to make that um, twinkling more interesting, basically. And then in the main loop of the code, uh, this is a very handy little template function that the, um, the fast LED library comes with. Obviously, normally loop runs every frame as fast as the Arduino is capable of processing it kind of thing but you don't always need every function to be um, run on every iteration through the code um, and so this is a this is a handy little thing to, to, to actually say okay there are some things which we only want to do in this case every 20 milliseconds what we're going to do is just rotate um, through the hues of the color spectrum so we're going to increase that if it gets to more than 128 I'm going to set it back to zero again so the hue values actually go from naught, which is kind of red, through to 255, so it's a whole byte. But I want to avoid the half of the color spectrum that's uh, too close to the kind of bluish color, which is what the LEDs are. Defined. I want to have quite a contrast here. So I'm limiting the uh, range of values just between naught and 128, which is going to give me more greens and yellows. Uh, and some red as well in that in that color spectrum there. Um, so that just cycles through every 20 milliseconds. And then this section here, this is uh, what actually determines the twinkling of the stars. So what we say is every 500 milliseconds or every half a second, what we're first of all going to do is fill all of the LEDs with a solid color. Uh, and that is um, this color value here. So it's a hue of 180, which is kind of a, a bluish color. Um, and full saturation. So that's going to be sort of the, the base color. And then what we'll say is we'll get a random value, um, which is going to be a, an 8 per value. So that's a chance of being 0 to 255. If that is under 128, so it's a 50 50 chance of it happening, what we'll then do is we will color uh, a random LED with the sparkle value instead. Uh, at maximum brightness, uh, maximum saturation as well. Um, so every half a second, basically, um, every LED has a 50% chance of sparkling. And you can kind of adjust those numbers to, um, you know, to, to, to vary it depending on how many you've got and how long you want people to have to be kind of studying the puzzle for to actually determine which ones are sparkling. But that's kind of what worked for me, I found. Um, and then the next section here, um, so having sparkled, what we want them to do is to kind of um, then just fade nicely back to their base level again. Um, so the fast LED library comes with a built-in function called fade to black. Um, so this just fades a small amount. It takes away uh, five 255ths of um, the brightness value each frame. Um, but we don't actually want to fade them all the way to black. What we want to do is to fade them back to this uh, base color again here. Um, and that's what this line does here. So this just clamps the, the minimum uh, value of each LED um, 
just to make sure that it doesn't actually fade lower than that. So it flashes, it has a 50% chance every half a second of flashing and then what it does is it fades back to uh, the base level. That's what the bits of code there. And lastly, so all we've done so far is we've just actually calculated the, the uh, values for each LED in the array. What we then need to do is actually descend that LED's value onto the strip. Uh, so that's what this line here does. And finally, we just um, introduce a, a, a delay, uh, pause a little bit before going on to the uh, next iteration. And that's it. Uh, so there you have it. That is the uh, Starry Night puzzle. Um, and I hope you found that uh, interesting and useful. Thanks very much for watching.